Hello and welcome to Control Delete Tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at um, creating wheels and rims. This is going to be a two-part um, series. So uh, the first part will be creating uh, the tires and then the second part will be creating the rims. And this is the, uh, the first part. So if you're watching the one on rims, you may want to watch the previous one. Um, so starting out rims first, obviously we want to start with research. Uh, or sorry, starting with yeah, I said tires. Okay, crazy guy. Um, so starting with tires, we want to look for a uh, a type of uh, tire tread that is going to have a very sort of simple repeating um, pattern, um, especially if you want to keep this as headache free as possible. Um, I'm only using the snipping tool just to kind of show you what I mean with easy repeating pattern, uh, something to look for. Okay, so if we look here at this image, um, and I'm just going to draw over this here with uh, the um, very simple drawing tool and the snipping tool, um, we have a section that goes up. And I'm going to draw this out kind of like breaking down the polygons. This part comes over. There's going to be a gap that again moves slightly down. And then another section coming down. Imagine these like polygons, if you will. Another gap in the tread. And then, kind of cut this off a little bit. Uh, another section coming down. And then once again, a gap. Okay, and we have the same thing happening on this side. Now, I realize that this side is kind of offset by one. Um, I can decide later if I actually want to do that offset. It's a tire tread. I'm not really that much worried about um, doing that with the tire. It's not something that's going to be super noticeable. Um, and the last part that we have is uh, we have the gap that goes this direction. And we need polygons that basically fill this gap as well. So I'll just trace this out. It's not the ideal tool for uh, drawing this, but hopefully you can make that out. So what we have is we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven polygons by two. So that's what we're going to start off with in Max. So I'm going to come back to Max here. I'm going to go into my top view. I'm going to turn on my snaps, and I'm going to set this to grid point for now. I'm going to leave vertex there for now as well. So I'm going to create a plane. And in the plane here, I'm just going to type in that I want my width or my length to be 2 and my width to be 7 based on what we had just created there. And I'm just going to do this for this side here. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'm just going to draw this out and I'm going to follow here. I'm going to go ahead and turn my grid off by hitting G just so we can see this. Uh, and the only reason I had done this is because um, I'm crazy. I don't know. There's not really any reason for really doing that. I just do it because um, I want things to be nice and easy, uh, even and lined up. But um, going back to the image, you can see we start off with this uh, thin part here. Then we got a wide, thin, wide, thin, wide, Thin. That's going to be our pattern for this. So I'm going to double click my edges here and I'm going to use the move tool. And I'm going to hit S or I can click here to turn off my snaps. I'm just going to click there. S will also turn those on and off. So we're going to go thin and that'll be our wide. I'll make this thin one about as thin as the one over here. This is my gap. Then I've got another um, thick space, one more thin space, and my mouse is really not allowing me to do anything today. Okay, there we go. This one was a little bit thicker than the rest, uh, than these ones, so I'll try to go like double the length here. Again, we're not following like uh, perfect references. 
And I'm going to keep this along the center point here, so I'm just going to grab all the vertices here and just move this over. And I'm going to make this one about half as thick as I've made these ones. The reason I'm doing that is because this is going to be mirrored onto the other side, and I want to make it uh, so that this gap that I have in the middle is going to be relatively the same size as these gaps, so that's why I'm making it half as thick here. Um, I'm also going to go into the hierarchy panel and I'm going to say effect pivot point and I'm going to move my pivot point here. I'm going to turn my grid back on. I'm going to set my pivot point to zero which will set it right here dead center of this. Um, and I'll go ahead and also move it back here. I have used the grid so I can type in 10 because my grid is set up that each one of these is 10 units. Um, and I'm doing that because uh, of a step that will come later for bending um, my tire around to make it a circle. So I'll turn effect pivot point back off and I'll turn my grid back off as well. Okay, so this repeating pattern oh, one other part. This part is another gap that's going to run between the treads this direction so I also want that to be thin so let me go ahead and do that now. So I can just double click the select there and I'll just drag this down until it's about the thickness that it, uh, I want that to be. So basically it's going to turn out that these are going to be our um, areas where the tire gets um, thicker, it's extruded. So I'm going to go into uh, perspective now uh, by hitting P and look at this and I'm going to go ahead and extrude this out. I'm just going to hit the check mark, I'm going to move these down uh, how far I, I think it really needs to be. Um, now the one thing with the tire is as we get closer to the uh, edge of the tire right here this thickness is going to kind of taper off um, and actually I see now that I'm looking at that I made a small mistake I do want to select this area as well um, so again I'll extrude let's move this down about there is nice and what I'm actually going to do is take the edges here I'm going to pull this down and in just a little bit to kind of round off the edges here. And I'm just kind of pulling this down slightly so that our tire tread gets a little thinner towards the edges here. And that's pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to go back into the top view. Uh, and in the top view, what I'm going to do is start dragging these sections down so that they have this bend to them. Now what's very important is whenever I do this, I want to make sure that I select the polygons on either side here so that when I move, I'm moving both sides the same amount. So I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to drag this down. Select the next section here. I could have also deselected those either way. Pull that down. I'm going to hold Alt and deselect here. That way I just have these ones selected. I'm just going to continue doing this. This section was a little bit further than the rest. And that's a bit too far. Just straighten this out just slightly. You know what, I'm going to go ahead and just have these sections here be kind of straight and then just have these be bent like that just to make it slightly different from the uh, the reference that we're using I think it's kind of a cooler look to it too, it's kind of staggered um, so that's what I'm going to end up using uh, for my tire tread okay so everything there looks alright now we can see as we did that we moved everything away from the pivot point because we are working in the sub-object modes. So if I go back up and I turn my grid on with G, I can see that was my original center point that I had. Um, this is kind of easily fixed. I can just take this all uh, in one of the modes. I could be in element mode really to select everything. And you can just move that back up. I'm not really worried about getting it perfect. I know that I had typed it in before uh, and I know I said I wasn't going to make it perfect, but you know what? Why not make it? Um, and I'll just move the pivot point here. I'll just say again 
We'll set that back to zero. And that way it's just set up there. So we can kind of see that. All right, so that's the first part um, of making the tread, is just making one section of the tread. Uh, and you could do any number of things with these areas that are kind of risen up. You know, if you want to have it to where maybe these are pulled down um, slightly just to give a little bit, a um, little bit more detail to the tires. That's fine, you know, doesn't really make too much of a difference. All right, so that's going to be the first part. Second part is going to be mirroring this over. Now that part's nice and simple because we can just simply use symmetry. So I will use the symmetry modifier here, symmetry. I'll click that, and we see that it disappears. Well, if I flip this, it will mirror it along the center point there. And I just flipped uh, along the X here, so there wasn't anything on this side. So if I was mirroring currently, I'm mirroring nothing over to the other side, which is nothing. I need to flip that so that it's mirroring this side over to this side rather than the other way it was. All right, I'm gonna right click and convert back to editable poly. And I'll turn the grid back off. And I'm gonna remove this center edge here. So I'm just gonna double click that edge. I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna click backspace, the backspace key. And that's gonna remove those edges. I don't really need those edges. They don't really do anything. So you can see that's all uh, been removed out of there. The next part is duplicating this pattern. Um, so to do that, I'm going to turn my snaps back on, but I'm going to right click and I'm going to turn off grid points and just keep vertex. So what's, what that's going to do is I'm going to see this little kind of cross pop up anywhere where there are vertices. And so what I'm going to do is duplicate this shape over uh, and over again. Now I'm not uh, a mechanic or anything. I don't really know about how many treads there are per tire. I'm sure there's somewhere you could look that up if you wanted to be very accurate to a type of tire. I'm going to go based off of um, just like a rough um, figure. Um, so we'll go with something like um, I'll do um, 72 treads, um, which may end up being like way too many. Um, let's actually do um, we'll do 50. That'll be a, a little bit better of a number. Um, so to duplicate this, I'm going to highlight one of the uh, vertices here to, that I'm snapping to, this corner. Uh, I'm actually going to do the back corner. I'm going to hold shift, and I'm going to start dragging this. When I do, I can see that if I get close to this vertex, it's going to snap to it. And now it's going to ask for how many copies that I want. I said I want to use 50. Uh, I've already got one, so that means I need to type in 49. So I'm making 49 copies, so we don't count the first one. Okay, and that's basically going to be my tread. Um, 50, that, that looks kind of okay. I probably wouldn't have been too far off with 72 as well, but we'll just stick with that. I'm gonna turn my snaps back off, and now I'm gonna attach all these together. So simple enough to do that. I can just say attach, list. I've only got these objects in here, so I know I can select my top plane, my bottom plane, and hold shift, and I'll select all of them. I'll say attach. Now there's just one object here. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this object tire. Um, actually, let's do tire 001, because you're gonna have multiple tires. Um, all right, so there's my tire. Um, so I need to do a couple of things to this tire to really finish it off. One, it's a little flat. Um, so we're going to round it first this direction, uh, which is going to be simple enough to do with a bend modifier. So I'm going to go ahead and go to bend, and uh, I'm going to change the angle here of my bend. So if I go ahead and start doing this, you can see, well, that's nothing near what I want it to be. Um, let's go to the X direction. So this is our X, and it runs left to right. So if we go to X, and we change the bend, now we can see that I can make this bend this direction. So I'm going to type in a number like, hmm, I'll go 30. 30 looks all right. So I'll go with 30. Um, so that's the first bend. And now we're going to bend it again. So we're going to apply another bend modifier. This time we want to bend it along the Y direction. So along here, so it'll bend around. So I'm going to go to Y. But you can see as soon as I try to start bending, it's actually bending uh, 
this direction, which is, it's still the y direction, which is what we want, but its direction is at zero. So I'm actually gonna type in negative 90 so that we can see it bends around the correct direction here. And then I need to make this come all the way back around and stop up here. And so now I need to close this off. So I'm gonna go ahead and just continue to um, click this um, spinner up. And that was a little bit too much overlap. So now I'm gonna just go into the decimals and really that actually looks pretty good. Um, I'm not saying this number is going to work for you, but first type in 360 and then work your way from there. Um, so I'll take a look at my tire. And that looks all right. This actually looks a little too fat for a tire, uh, if you ask me. Um, let's see here. So I can grab the gizmo, which is the Ben modifier's gizmo. And if I drag it down, I can actually change the size of this tire a little better um, so that it doesn't get so fat. And it looks pretty good. Let me go a little bit more. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay, so now I'm gonna right click, convert to editable poly. Okay, so right now one major problem with this tire is if I go to my borders, borders are meant to select any holes in your mesh. Um, so if I hit control A, I'm gonna see that there are uh, all these areas that need to be welded. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I hit control A to select all holes or all border edges I'm going to hold control and click vertex, which will then convert the border selection to a vertex selection. And now I will do weld. I'm going to click the settings button there. And what I'm looking for is that my before number is smaller in the after number, which lets me know that stuff has been welded. So I'm going to hit check. And now I'm going to do one more check. I'm going to go back to borders. I'm going to click uh, anywhere just to deselect my old selection. I'm going to hit control A and I'm going to look to see and it looks like I've only got the ones on the sides here which of course I'm going to have those uh, which is fine. Okay. Um, so with those selected I'm going to come up to uh, my U or my scale and I'm going to scale this down slightly. And then I'm going to change my pivot point type from use pivot point center to use selection center. So what that does is it changes it between the objects that were selected um, to their pivot points to the objects that are selected plural to their pivot point. And I'm just going to scale this out slightly in just the X direction. So I'm just hi highlighting X. All right, so that gives me like a slight bevel on my tire here. Okay, I'm gonna change this now again back to use pivot point center. And I'm gonna hold shift, I'm gonna scale this down. So that's extruded out uh, based on the border edges here. I'm gonna switch it back to selection center, scale it out again slightly like that, and maybe go a little wider. And then I'll do this again. So I'll go back to pivot point, hold shift, scale down, and then selection center. I'm going to scale in just slightly. And that's going to be it for the tire. Um, I realize that we can see through the tire, but the rim is going to help cover that. And if it really becomes a thing that it bothers you, easy way to fix that is you can bridge uh, from one side here to the other. Um, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to deselect the very top edge on this side and the very top edge on this side. The reason I do that is so whenever I bridge I force it to bridge from the side here to the side there and not let it try to pick which edges it's going to um, uh, extend to or extrude to um, or bridge to and then I can just select this and say cap 
and that'll fill that in. So you can do that if you really want to, uh, if you're worried about you know seeing through your tire or something like that. Um, that's a very simple solution. And then the uh, the next part of the video is going to show creating our uh, rim uh, for this specific tire. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Uh, in case this is the only part of the video you want to see, please subscribe and please share this with anyone you think uh, might find it useful. Thanks.